Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Massive ships such as aircraft carriers are built for open water. When it comes to traversing the narrow areas in ports and harbors, they need some help. For this type of maneuvering, tugboats are used to push and pull them to their mooring berths, where they are securely moored using techniques that have withstood the test of time. Warping was an early way of moving and anchoring huge ships. This approach entailed mooring a ship with a heavy weight or permanent objects on shore and then drawing it along the ropes and capstans. The first tugboats were propelled by steam engines. Scottish engineer William Symington created the first steam-powered tugboat, the Charlotte Dundas, in 1802. It used a watt steam engine and paddle wheels. Tugboat design has improved over time, with more sturdy hulls, more powerful engines, and innovative features such as azimuth thrusters for increased maneuverability. These strong workhorses move massive 100,000-ton displacement aircraft carriers to their berths. Although tugboats and warping have changed, Mooring still involves securing ships to the dock with lines. Mooring a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier requires perfect coordination. First, tugs aid the enormous vessel in approaching the pier. The bosun and deck crew prepare fenders to protect the hull in case of contact. As the ship approaches the dock, lines, hawser, and mooring lines are prepared and thrown to line handlers on shore. Mooring winches manage the slack on these lines. The dock's bollards and cleats secure the bow and stern lines, as well as the breast and spring lines. These lines are adjusted systematically to maintain tension and stability. Once secure, shore power cables are attached to provide electrical support. The entire procedure necessitates superior seamanship and exact collaboration. As the carrier approaches the port, the navigation changes to harbor speeds. The port control and ship's bridge coordinate maneuvers, with tugboats assisting. The deck department assigns workers to mooring stations equipped with capstans and bits. Approaching the pier, the carrier moves slowly and steadily. The deck crew deploys heaving lines using vessel equipment, such as chocks and fair leads. These lines connect to heavier mooring lines, or housers. The tugs hold their position as the lines are secured around dockside bollards. Once secured, winches and capstans tighten the lines to ensure even tension.
final changes to the ship allow for gangway deployment and shore-based operations to begin. Mooring does not just use any type of line. To provide stability and security when docking a huge warship, such as a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, several types of mooring lines are utilized. Bow lines stop forward movement and secure the bow, whereas stern lines keep the ship from going backward. Breast lines run perpendicularly from the ship to the dock, keeping the vessel close to the berth. Spring lines extend diagonally from the bow and stern, controlling forward and aft movement. Headlines are identical to bow lines, but set further forward to give additional stability. Finally, aft lines, like stern lines positioned further to the back, also provide stability. Each line contributes to the ship's stability in the face of tidal shifts and external influences. Before a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier departs, mooring lines must be handled carefully. The deck crew, led by the bosun, prepares to release the ship from the dock. Communication is maintained with port control and the tugboats. Winches progressively release the tension on the mooring lines. Breast and spring lines are slackened and cast off first, then bow and stern. Each line is carefully collected and guided with fair leads and capstans to avoid entanglement. Dockside handlers assist in removing lines from bollards. Once all lines are on board, they are carefully coiled and stowed. Tugboats hold the carrier's position until completely free, facilitating a seamless departure. To be deemed docked safely, a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier's mooring lines must be tightly fastened to dockside bollards and kept at consistent tension to avoid movement. The bow, stern, breast, and spring lines stabilize the vessel's position, ensuring it remains fixed regardless of environmental conditions. Once the mooring lines are secured, the crew does a final examination to ensure stability. When the mooring lines are tied aboard the vessel before departure, the crew ensures they are correctly stowed to avoid entanglement or obstruction. Tugboats help move the carrier away from the dock and keep it in position until it is free of the berth and the crew man the rails. U.S. aircraft carriers have two anchors. The deck crew must understand how to hoist and lower the anchors. The deck department, overseen by the bosun, holds training sessions. Sailors practice using the windlass to regulate the anchor chain's payout and retrieval. They learn to employ brake release devices and chain stoppers to manage anchor weights. 
Communication drills guarantee that the bridge and deck teams work together effectively. Flight quarters, flight quarters. Safety precautions are emphasized, such as wearing protective equipment and avoiding backlash zones. Realistic simulation exercises prepare the crew for numerous eventualities. Ensuring that anchoring operations can be carried out efficiently and safely in various marine conditions. It does not happen often, but ships do lose anchors. A good example is the operation conducted on September 26, 2019. Marines worked with U.S. Navy divers and military contractors to recover a lost anchor off White Beach, Okinawa, Japan. The misplaced anchor had hampered ship anchoring for weeks, significantly disrupting port operations. Recovery attempts included noting the anchor's location and working with contractors to collect it. Salvage procedures are sophisticated, requiring expert personnel to conduct underwater searches, mark positions, and operate lifting equipment. Low visibility and underwater risks necessitate strict safety protocols. But in the end, the operation was successful as the anchor was retrieved. Ports have limited docking facilities. In such instances, another way of docking is used. Nesting involves docking ships adjacent to one another, usually near a port or dock. This approach best uses limited dock space by allowing numerous vessels to moor simultaneously. Nesting, commonly utilized in congested ports or large-scale naval operations, necessitates careful maneuvering and coordination. Fenders are used on the outboard ship to protect the hull, while gangways permit access between vessels. The mooring lines are carefully maintained to ensure stability and safety. This strategy makes optimal use of dock space, but it requires tremendous coordination and seamanship to ensure the security and preparedness of all stacked ships. Vessels like submarines can also move next to other ships to take on stores. An Ohio-class submarine docks alongside a submarine tender with meticulous precision. Tugs aid the submarine's maneuver as it approaches the tender. The deck crew prepares fenders to cushion collision. Mooring lines are passed from the submarine to the tender's deck crew, who tie them to cleats and bollards with capstans and winches. Once moored, gangways or brows are used to shift crew members. Supply hoses and lines are connected to transport stocks, gasoline, and food. Continuous communication guarantees smooth operations. The operation is accompanied by rigorous safety regulations and inspections, ensuring efficient resupply without jeopardizing either vessel's preparedness or security. Then, there is yet another mooring technique worth mentioning. Mooring a ship to a buoy requires a precise maneuver. 
The ship approaches the buoy at a slow, controlled pace, with deck workers waiting at the bow. A heaving line with a messenger line connected to a mooring hauser is tossed to workers aboard a workboat or directly to the buoy. The hauser is subsequently secured to the buoy's mooring ring or eye. Winches aboard the ship control the tension, securing the hauser tightly. Fenders may be used to protect the ship's hull. Continuous monitoring ensures the mooring line is properly tensioned, keeping the vessel firmly tied to the buoy regardless of tide changes or weather conditions. Mooring and anchoring ships are crucial parts of naval operations. The way in which ships and submarines are moored or nested has been tried and tested for centuries. Good training and coordination ensure that these operations are executed effectively. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.